switching gears, let's talk about Microsoft. Microsoft had their event the day before, yes. and they showed off a couple of new things. First off, they showed off a Surface Studio, which is a massive 28-inch touch panel display. This thing, to me, is, is beautiful. I do like the design, and the guy, I forget his name, he got on stage talking about the design, the innovation, and everything about it. Right. So, very intuitive design. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you, know, I'll, you can see it right here. I'm going to show video pictures of it. Very cool design. So the display itself, like I said, is 28 inches. It is um, obviously touchscreen. Uh, some of the specs, 13.5 uh, million pixels. There is no display out there that has that many pixels they, that, that they said. Um, this also, they also packed all that into a 12.5 millimeter thick display. So if you turn this thing to the side, it is really slim. And the display itself was uh, 4,500 by 3,000 um, pixels. So not pixels, but the, the resolution. Mm -hmm. So pretty, pretty, pretty impressive. What are your thoughts about that? Um, I, I love the way it looks. Uh, the first thing I thought, of course, is this is their version of the iMac, but it does a lot more. It does, a, to their um, credit, it does a lot more. Um, I, I was pretty impressed with the design when I first seen it, but when when I seen what it could actually do as far as the tilting of the screen and the, there's another peripheral that I'm sure we're going to talk about here shortly that you can put on the screen and you can draw with the Surface Pen. The Surface Pen is supported with this thing. So I, I, I like it. I really, really like it. And I want one, <laughs> but am I going to get one? Well, if you guys help us out, donate some money to yeah. us. We yeah. would love to get one for you. But yes, this thing is what well, it starts off at twenty nine ninety nine for the the one terabyte version. That one has the Intel Core um, i five in there, um, eight gigs of RAM with the two gigabyte GPU in there. So you know, decent power for that price for for that one. But it does jump up after that. Uh, we're looking at. Um, what the higher end is what thirty four ninety nine yeah. uh, one terabyte or two terabytes with the Core i seven, no sorry, thirty four ninety nine is the next uh, model up one terabyte um, the Core i seven sixteen gigabytes of RAM and the same two gigabyte GPU. Then the highest model is thirty nine ninety nine that has the two terabyte drive in there Core i seven thirty two gigs of RAM and a four gigabyte GPU. So again, this is not a device that's for an average consumer. Somebody just to go there and pick it up just to you know, surf the internet or something with it. No, yeah, you, you're not buying this to surf the internet. Uh, this sorry. is a professional display, and what they showed off was really tailored towards uh, professionals and yeah. creators or whatever. Yeah, um, there was a feature where you can turn the uh, RGB mode on and turn it off uh, just to get an idea of what your um, end user is going to see because mm -hmm. this is such a high resolution screen. Not everybody's going to look at this or, or the, the website you design on this type of screen so you got to dummy it down and they they it looks like they figured out a way there's a mode where you can switch back and forth between yep you can um, see what it's going to look like what yep. it's going to look like on a normal display um yep. but i i, I mean i, I would love there's to one core one. yeah there's one core there's literally i yeah there's literally one core coming out of this great design i i can't help but to say great design looks great the keyboard and mouse look great as well those are both new um when I looked on their website, it, they're coming out November 10th. Mm -hmm. um, the one that they showed most was 99 bucks, and then the mouse, I don't know how much that was. Yeah, I didn't see a price for the mouse, yeah. Overall. Yeah, I yeah overall, I love that. I mean, I love how he was, you know, you can just tilt this thing over and lean on it. So it has something there called palm rejection. So you can actually put your palm on there while you're writing, and it's just going to ignore that and still allow you to touch or whatever mm -hmm. and draw. Um, another thing they showed off was the Surface Dial which can be used with that. So Surface Dial is a little peripheral that allows you to turn the switch and it's also, again, adaptable to the application that you're in. Um, the way they showed it off was pretty unique, like especially for an artist. So if they're painting, you can turn the dial as you're stroking and the colors will change, which to me was is, is amazing. Yeah, yeah, if you're an artist, that it, it's a no-brainer. Like if you could afford this, this is a no-brainer as far as, uh I can see studios, gaming studios, getting these. I would there. love yeah, that. Like, yes. Instead of the Wacom tablets, and I'm, I'm sure people will still love to use their Wacom tablets or however you pronounce it to draw on. But in the future, I would see offices with, with strictly for their artists only these things. That'll be do that's dope. I like that idea. Yeah, that's it is dial. really nice. That little dial is just, and say once you, it, it will be compatible with uh, Surface Pro Four, yeah, the yeah. Surface Books. 
and the new Surface Book, we'll just talk about just a little bit. And but the key thing with the Surface, uh, the Surface Studio and the Surface Dial, you could put it on a screen and it'll actually attach to it, so it will not um, move when you have it attached to the Surface uh, okay. Studio. Okay. On the other ones, it doesn't have that um, feature right. in there, but with the Surface Studio, it does have that, so it can kind of stay there. I'm not sure how they're doing it, I but. I, I'm not sure. They didn't. They didn't really say. But yeah, the the design is really it's really nice. I mean, I, I was blown away by it. Yeah. I, and I wasn't expecting this either. I was expecting a new Surface Book. Um, when we're going to talk about that. Um, so when they talked about the Surface Book, I wasn't sure if it was just an update to the Surface Book or was it a new Surface Book version. They didn't really say. Um. Oh, you're talking about this this new surface, surface the book, one that right. they showed at this kind of update. So this is version, a, yeah. yeah, this looks like just a iterative update. You know, like kind of how Apple does with their with their items, um, the MacBook line. I don't know. It's, so I'm not mad that they didn't change the design on the Surface Book. You probably don't need to change this for maybe another year. Um, so they could probably get away with this design for another year. But this is just an iterative update. It's got a new dock, and I'm sure you're going to talk about the specs. But yeah, it's just iterative. Um, for the most part, I, I don't know that there was anything, you know, very new stand out as far as um, features or the one thing about the Surface Book. Uh, it's something else I want to talk about. Oh, jumping back to the Surface um, Studio, the hardware a little bit. Um, so the GPU in there is in the higher end. I think it's a nine seventy. Yeah. They, so. Um, yeah, the 970, so, which is a good card. Um, I, like we said, we talked about this briefly. They probably had the design already down before the 1070 and 1080 came out. Yeah. So, because I would have liked to have seen that in there, but the 970 is a great card to be, so. Yeah, the 970 is a great card. Um, you can still get some good 1080p gaming done on it. Um, it uh, like you're, uh, if you were going to use this for gaming, but right. th this machine <laughs> wasn't made for gaming specifically, so. But but it is a powerful um, GPU, so it's gonna it's gonna take you it's gonna last you for a little bit. Yep, yep. So back to the Surface Book, really. Uh, so that one has the 970 GPU in there, updated. Um, the battery life is improved, so we're saying about 30 percent more battery life, which will be about 16 hour battery life under ideal conditions. Um, so the graphics, like I said, the graphics is better, and this one is starting at 23.99, and that will be available in November. Okay. So the new Surface Book also has the 970. 970. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I like. I li and they made it a little. They had to make it a little bit thicker because of that. Uh, the graphics card, but it still looks very good. And Microsoft said as well. I guess somebody asked on Twitter, could you take your old screen and just buy a dock, a new Surface Book dock, and put your new your old screen on there? Mm -hmm. You nope, not no. support it. Okay, that would have been all. So that would have been awesome if if these two products could be sold separately and you could just upgrade grade the dock. Yes, so, yeah, yes. You upgrade your GPU every so mm -hmm. often. That's an awesome idea, and I I, I kind of I think it was a missed opportunity, kind of. But you know, it's still a great product. Uh, it's still a great product. I think. Um, yep. All right, switching gears. Also, uh, Microsoft talked about uh, a new Windows 10 creator. Um, update release. So the focus of this um, Windows update is around creation. So one of the things that they showed off was 3D. They're really okay, taking a plunge into 3D. So allowing you, the average consumer, to actually create 3D objects. And very easily, I might add, yeah. you can just take an object, put it in oh, whatever application it is, hit the button, and it comes out as a 3D object. Or you could take a picture. So what they showed off on stage was the lady took a picture of a sandcastle in real life. She on scanned all of her on her phone. And once it was done, it was uploaded to the cloud and it was full 3D. Yep. And you could take that 3D image and plop it into um, whatever. Facebook. She Facebook. showed the, the example they showed was Facebook, I believe. And she, she edited it. She added trees and all that good stuff in it. Um, and I think they were standing by the castle. Yeah, that's... Yeah. I like that technology. It makes it so that it's easy for everybody to get in 3D modeling or, uh, yeah, 3D modeling. Um, Without or, having to go into Maya or yeah, anything. for anybody who's ever used that software, it's overwhelming. Um, of course, you, if you take time to get to learn it, it'll be second nature, but this makes it so much easier. I can't imagine how much easier, like, things like game development, this, uh, this could probably make 
3D game development a little bit easier for people who can't model mm -hmm. um, items the way they want to, and they can just use reference, like an action figure as a reference or something like that. I, I think that the the um, the tech is really cool. Yeah, I think it's, there's a lot of potential. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this um, this 3D technology. I, I probably will be using it. You know, you probably yeah. will be seeing a lot of 3D stuff on Sounds Nerdy coming in future. Uh, so this will be coming out in 2017. So early 2017, they didn't give us a specific date, but early 2017. Is that is that coming with the rest of the, the Windows 10 update? I think so all that's in the, the Windows spring, 10 okay, update. That big, yep. Okay, okay. Yep. Um, switch gears a little bit. They talked a little bit about HoloLens. They showed up. So what they're trying to do is have mixed reality, mix AR and VR together. They're trying to get into that uh, space there. So it showed off HoloLens a little bit. They didn't really give any details about HoloLens, nothing about pricing or whatever consumer version or anything like that. They did talk a little bit about VR headsets. So apparently they're partnering with the Novo, Asus, Acer, HP, Dell. They're all going to have VR headsets that's going to come out and starting at uh, $299. That was a bit of a nugget that they dropped I there. I can't wait to see what that... Like, they dropped that like it w didn't mean anything. <laughs> right. Like, I can't wait to see what what that's all about. Yeah, because they really didn't go into any details about it either. Yeah, they, like, think, what kind of screen or is going to be like using that. a single screen or two lenses like the Vive or the Oculus? I, I can't... I really want to see what that's about. And uh, talking about HoloLens, I think the reason that they pushed for... They're pushing for this 3D... Um, capturing software is because they want their developers to be able to make um, stuff for HoloLens. Yep. Um, they're making a lot of smart moves, it, it looks like, so um, kudos to them on, yep. on that. Yep. Also part of the update was gaming. Um, yeah. So a lot of updates are designed around eSports and game broadcasting. So with their acquisition of Beam, um, they're going to bring game casting to the Xbox One and make it you know, seamless and a lot easier. What they showed off on stage was pretty straightforward to actually broadcast the game. It was a couple of clicks and you were also, it's also going to be near real time with the beam technology. We're talking, you know, milliseconds or sub second um, difference or sub, sub second lateness between, you know, real life and, you know, what you're seeing. So I was very impressed with it. I know you said you were really excited about so many updates that they have for esports. Oh yeah, the tournament stuff seems like it'll be fun. Um, it'll be. I, I was excited about that because it, you'll probably see like tournaments popping up everywhere, just uh, like little tournaments, tournament <laughs> <laughs> tournaments in your area, like just people having fun. Like if if it's as easy as they say it is, it, it looks like it'll be a lot of fun, um, just as a tool to bring gamers together a little bit more. Um, but yeah, that that was awesome. Um, and then there was something else that we that they talked about that I was excited for. Oh yeah, uh, we we just talked about it. Uh, the beam stuff. Yeah, the beams. Yep. Uh, they're building it right into Windows, so you won't have to go to an outside source to capture your gameplay. Or is Beam just streaming, or is it capture as well? I I know they mentioned they they built capture into Windows 10, but I can't remember. It was that if part of Beam, Yeah, I'm not sure. Or if, if that was something different. But they're building all this gaming software in, into Windows, and, and I can't help but to be excited. As a gamer, I can't help but to yep. be excited about that. Really excited about that. Yep. So, again, another smart move by Microsoft. Yeah. Yep. Uh, just another quick note for me, because I love my sound. I'm a kind of an audiophile. Dolby Atmos support is coming to the Xbox One yeah. S as well. So, again, if you don't know what Dolby Atmos is, it allows you to get sound overhead as well. So... Oh, before we get out of here, one thing that they did not mention or we, they did not support was external GPUs. Neither, oh, at neither yeah. conference. So that was the so. that was the biggest. That was actually the biggest thing for me. I was looking forward to because I bought the Razer and I have the Razer Core. Um, what's funny is I didn't expect it to work as well as it does. Like I didn't expect to get the performance that I'm getting out of these these two items uh, together. So I was really excited to see that it it. I, it could replace my desktop. This thing has, re the core has replaced my desktop. So I was disappointed when I didn't see a Thunderbolt 3 port on the Windows Surface tablet or the lap or their laptop, the um, Surface Book. Uh, but hopefully um, when they do change the chassis a little bit, um, just the shell of it, they, they do incorporate that, maybe next year.
maybe next year. Yep. All right, that's everything we have for you today. I want to thank you once again for taking the time to watch this video. Please join us on a conversation in the comment section down below. Tell us what you think about either of the conferences. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. While you're at it, make sure you subscribe to our channel. I want to thank you for everybody out there who has shown support to our channel. We're growing at a good pace, but we need to grow faster, so help us out. I have been Jamoka from Sounds Nerdy. You can follow me on Twitter at SNJamoka. I'm Charles. You can follow me at Pinkney Char on Twitter. And make sure you follow Sounds Nerdy on Twitter at Sounds Nerdy. And until the next video, guys, stay nerdy. I will rise to the top, rise to the top. I will never stop, I will never give up. You're my vision, I'm on a mission. And I'll totally your permission. Rise to the top, rise to the top. I will never stop, I will never give up. It's my life.